Today, I want to share with you ideas, thoughts, progress, uh, interesting information about carbon dioxide utilization. Why, why now, and how we should actually do this, and how to think about this, and in fact, what it is. But let's take a step back and talk about carbon. The element carbon is essential to life on planet Earth. No carbon, no life, with very few exceptions. So we, we need to start this conversation with a recognition that carbon as such is something that's not only not bad, but is it's essential. It's great. It's good. It's, it's, it's really good that we have it. So where does all that carbon come from that makes up a large fraction of our bodies, our DNA, our muscles, our foods, uh, many of our daily products that we use, uh, soap, plastics, it's endless. It's everywhere. So life without carbon, as I said, doesn't work. But again, where does it come from? Well, there are two main sources of carbon uh, as we utilize it. One is indirectly supplied to us through plants. As plants grow, they ingest carbon dioxide from the air and convert it into valuable materials. It's like a chemical factory in a plant that takes the carbon dioxide breaks it apart, reshuffles it with other nutrients taken from the ground, and makes carbohydrates, fibers, liquids, uh, lots of things that can be made out of, carbon, of, of uh, CO2 that way. The other big source uh, of carbon for us humans comes from the ground. It comes out of coal mines and oil fields. So fossil sources. From these fossil um, carbon sources, we can make many of our daily, uh, daily life products, plastics, soap, etc. Same thing. We predominantly use these uh, fossil carbon sources, though, uh, for their high energy contents. As we set them on fire, literally, this energy is made available to us for heating, for transport, and, um, uh, and uh, as, a, as a source of uh, making chemicals that happen to, uh, to be made when, when the um, uh, hydrocarbons uh, from petroleum are converted into um, many of the products that we need. So, so far so good, right? The need is demonstrated, the uh, sources are there. What's the problem? Why do we hear about carbon dioxide every day? And why is it once of a sudden a problem. Well, if we look back what we have done over the last 200 years, as industrialization has grown, as more and more energy ha has been needed, more and more materials have been made, concrete, plastics, lots of stuff. All of that has led us to dig out more and more of these fossil carbon sources and convert them and ultimately they end up as a gas, this carbon dioxide that accumulates in the uh, atmosphere. It accumulates there because it has little energy left to do anything else, so it doesn't react much with uh, anything that's, uh, that's in the atmosphere too. So it just stays there. More and more builds up and we have seen what, uh, what happens. The CO2 molecule can capture a lot of heat thermal energy that comes from the sun and otherwise would partially be reflected back um, into outer space. The carbon dioxide molecules in the atmosphere keep that trapped and as a result the average temperature on earth is rising which as we begin to see has really negative impacts on the well-being, safety and the living environment of a growing number of people around the world. We have to do something about it. And this is, this is where carbon dioxide utilization comes into play. I told you earlier that plants take in carbon dioxide and convert it into valuable products. Well, we learn a lot from nature everywhere. Why not do the same thing in big factories? Because plants can't do it all for us. There's just not enough space to grow enough plants to take out all of that excess CO2 that is in the atmosphere way above what needs to be there or can be there for a stable climate. So we need to seek ways in how we can actually take that out and either store it underground 
put it literally back where we took it from, or since we do need carbon-based products, as I've uh, shown at the beginning, we can use that carbon uh, dioxide molecule as the source of that carbon. So, for example, we can take that carbon dioxide molecule, we can take water, put in energy, and we can make fuels. Didn't I tell you before that these hydrocarbon, these fuel molecules that we derive from petroleum are used to actually generate or release energy? Now we're saying we're putting energy back in to make fuels, to then bring energy back out. Well, that's exactly it. Fuels are nothing else but just energy carriers, right? a convenient way of uh, delivering energy to where we need it. And with the availability of really cheap uh, renewable energy from wind and solar, we can actually make that happen. The technology is emerging. It's shown how it actually works. And therefore, making fuels, making chemicals, the plastics that we need for many of our medical services and more, all of that can be made out of carbon dioxide. And therefore, we are reusing, recycling that CO2 from the atmosphere when uh, it has been released to make the things we need. There is no more additional carbon, carbon dioxide being added to the atmosphere if we work this way. Furthermore, we can actually look at um, processes that can take this carbon dioxide and store it forever in products. We can take carbon dioxide and react it with waste materials or some rocks we find in nature to make concrete, like this planter. This planter was made in parts with carbon dioxide that was harvested from air, converted into a rock, and that's how it stays. So we have two things. We remove some of the CO2, solve some of our climate problem this way, we store it forever, and in the process, the concrete we make is less harmful to the environment because we do not need to uh, produce as many uh, of the other uh, harmful ingredients with lots of excess energy. So it's really a really beneficial way of uh, making this all happen. So why don't we do this? It seems to make a lot of sense, well, and it does. And literally, we have no choice. We must do it. The problem only is, Regular concrete, regular gasoline, regular plastic wrap made from petroleum or made from traditional um, cements are just cheaper than the alternatives that are emerging. Yet, if we look at the alternative, we don't really have one. We have to take care of the planet. We have to make sure that the excess CO2 is being removed we don't add more to it, and we have to deal with the cost. Will we ever be able to do this? I'm certain of that. Let's just take a step back to maybe 1990, when solar uh, panels were really, really expensive and really weren't affordable and certainly didn't make sense from an economic point of view as um, a, a mainstream uh, provider of energy. Look at it today. Solar and wind energy parks are producing the cheapest and cleanest energy that we have available. It was all triggered by government support that um, enabled the launch of these technologies. And I think we need to see the same thing here with carbon dioxide realization. So we see our carbon future has a solution. And um, I hope that I have interested you in CO2 utilization, that you are um, excited about it, and perhaps join in uh, making it a reality. Thank you so much.